G'day guys and girls, welcome back to the channel, welcome to all the new subscribers. In this one we're going to take a much closer look at the Luffy XF Revolution multi-gauge. initial startup you'll probably hear my dash cam as well but you'll see the Luffy fire up and there's three buttons at the back which I'll put in a picture of the top button navigates through the menus up the bottom down and the middle button selects your choice and it also if you hold it down will go back in the menu so let's fire it up Here it shows you what's on the back. So we've got the up and down arrows. We've got the middle button here. Confirm your entry or you hold it down to go back in the menu. You'll have the SD card. As you look at it from the back, this will be the layout. Your auto dimmer. And you've got extra, you've got extra accessory wires on the back behind the actual big gauge. So this is in product info and how to use it. So this tells you how, how to basically use it and set it up. It does come with an extra ignition wire. However, I haven't needed to use it. When I did question why it was there from Luffy AU, they said it's basically in some of the older cars, you might need to rig this up to an ignition source. Product installation, mine came pre, pre-set up. You might need to go through and fiddle around with it. System update, it tells you how to do a system update. And that's just a nice thank you for purchasing. So that's in the user manual section. We've gotten about, tells you all about what it is, OBD2 type. Self-explanatory. This is just looking at the gauge that I like. It's got your boost gauge in the middle. I've got a digital speedo, ignition, that's your timing, your intake air temperatures, air fuel ratio, and coolant temps right there. So to enter the menus to change all of these things, you want to press the middle button and scroll up and down with the top button or the lower button. So first of all is system setup. You can change your units here by just pressing the middle button and then press up or down to go from mile an hour to kilometers an hour. You can press the middle button again to move across um, and then that'll change PSI to KPA. You can also change your temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit and liters per hundred to miles per gallon. And then to go back in the menu, you just hold the middle button down. The speed, RPM adjust, um, volts and all that. Um, with speed, if you're doing 80 kilometers an hour on your dash and you want your Luffy digital speedo to read the same, you just need to play around. I've got this set to 106% and that will read pretty accurate to what my dash is reading. Same with RPMs, you just adjust it. You have a water warm up. So I've got it off, but you can set it so that it sends a little alarm, a little beep, when your coolant temperatures get to a certain level that you're happy with. Fuel type, you can change between gas, petrol and diesel. This is your fuel consumption adjust. So most modern cars with an OBD2 port will have this anyway, but if it doesn't, then you can adjust it and set it here. Speed segment alarm. 
So this is basically a speed limit alarm. If the speed limit's 110 kilometers an hour and you want to set an alarm for that, when the Luffy gauge reads over it, it will, um, it'll tell you speed for gear position, hourly chime, you set your clock, the buzzer sound, the system update. Now in the top, there's a little um, micro USB and you can update it through that. Hopefully your Luffy supplier will be able to help you with that and reset your settings. So to go back in the menu again, hold the middle button and then here's where you can change your display. If you want to change your display, you want to customize the colors or you want to customize which gauges are shown, you need to press the middle button, scroll down to display setup and press it and then item setup is your first one. So now you can scroll through and you can change each individual gauge to show you exactly what you want to see. Now, in my Mark 7 Fiesta ST, you, I can't access all of the gauges. For example, I can't access I can't access the oil pressure and oil temperature, which I was really hoping I could, but through this OBD2 port, it doesn't it doesn't do it. So, when you go through and you press it, you've got water temp, which I like water temp A, water temp B, exhaust temperature, voltage, gear position. Now my car again doesn't show this through the OBD2 port. Um, I'll just put it in first. No, nothing. But each car is different, so have a play around and you might enjoy it. Uh, fuel rail pressure, that's a good one. Um, so that's times 100 PSI. So that, that's a good one if you're trying to troubleshoot, if you've got issues with fuel rail pressure. So that's a good one to have. Fuel rail pressure A, B. Fuel temperature. I don't have the sensor for, but you might. Mass airflow. So that might be a decent one as well if you're trying to troubleshoot your airflow meter or you're trying to troubleshoot if your car's performing as well as it should. Intake air temperature. Absolute throttle position. So it's on 11.7% at the moment, but the car's just idling. Um, Um, EGR exhaust, I'm not sure what that means, I think it's exhaust gas something. Engine load. So there's lots and lots and lots of different things that if your car has all of these sensors and goes through the OBD2 port, then there's an OBD, uh, sorry, O2 sensor, bank one sensor two. So. Barometric pressure, charge air temperature, so as you can see and then you just to run that one you just press the button, hold it down the middle button and then you can go back to your other gauges, hold the middle button again So item colors, you can change You can change individual ones. As you can see, this one up the top is changing with the slider. So if you want something to just stand out, you could put it in red or a color that's catchy. If there was something, say you're on a track day or you're troubleshooting and you just really wanted to be able to focus on that at a quick glance, and you can change the color. 
review peak values. So if you go for a drive, you can review peak boost. Um, something to note is through this OBD2 port of mine, it will peak at 22.5 PSI, even though the boost gauge on the Luffy will go to show 30 PSI, it won't go beyond 22.5 PSI. Reset peak values, auto dimmer. This one's great. It's got a little sensor in the back and as as it senses the light getting dimmer, the screen has actually been dimming, so that's really good. You can change your display brightness manually anyway. This looks like an oil pressure warning limit. However, mine doesn't have that. Clear average fuel. So, that is how you change your gauges on the Luffy. Someone asked me if you can change, if we change the screen, this RPM, the max RPM figure in the tacos. Now I'll show you how to do that. Press the middle button, go to display setup, item setup, and then you can scroll up and down through the different gauges that you've got. And when you're on the taco, select it with the middle one and use up and down. So that changes it. Now the max value is just over 6,000 RPM. And now that takes you up to 9,000 RPM. If you go back and you can do that for each individual gauge. Okay. Now that you've increased the RPM range on the, on the gauge up to 9,000, you'll notice that there's no yellow and red line here. I'll show you how to do that. Press the middle button to get into your menu go into the warning setup and then you've got RPM so that's set at 11,000 so select that with the middle hold it down and you can go down to we'll go down to eight and a half thousand select it hold it go down and if we make this seven and a half thousand, the RPM shift light, we'll just put it there. So now when we go to it, you'll see now you've got the yellow line and the red line. So that's how you can adjust where you want to shift. So if you want to shift anywhere in between that seven thousand and eight and a half, then that's where you make your yellow line. And you've obviously got your red line there for your own safety. One thing that's spoken about with these is any lag in, um, in the gauges. So it's pretty responsive. Um, to check and adjust it, get into the menu. Go into System Setup, PID Time Loop, and then you can adjust the milliseconds. As you can see, that's much slower reacting and much slower moving. So. The next menu down is sequential LED setup. So you've got some lights that go across the bottom here. You can have them as an RPM shift light, 
an RPM warning. You can change the pattern. So you can have it going just from left to right. You can have it going from the outside in. Warn or shift setting value, 4,000 RPM sequential. So you, you can have them light up at 500, 100, 200 to 500, 100 to 500 RPM increments. I've got it set to 500. Sequential multicolor on. You can have sequential LEDs just red, just green, just blue. And that's your sequential light modes. Warning setup is the next one. So you can have a warning at RPM. So you use that as like a shift warning. RPM shift. There you go. Um, that'll make sure that you don't over rev your car. Speed. I'm not going to reach 300, but that just means that it won't chime. If your volts drop below a certain level, you can have a warning, which is handy. Now, water temp. I've got it set at 105 degrees Celsius at the moment, so if it does go over 105, it will beep, and it, the gauge that's actually up in this corner will go from white font to red. You can do the same with the oil temperature. You can, it's like an overboost. If, if you overboost, it'll say oil pressure, fuel pressure, so lots of different um, lots of different warnings just for safety, especially if you're out on track. So this one's time attack mode. Now people are gonna say in the comments that I should actually just get out on the road and do it, but there's nowhere around here where I can really do it. So you've got your start, you've got your review, select your mode. So you can do 0 to 100, 0 to 200. You can do a quarter mile, and that's it. So it'll measure, it'll measure based on your speed from the ODB or the kilometers through there. You can reset your best, and that's it. But if you go into start, it actually comes up like a graph. So the left is 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100 kilometers. So and it's, it'll, it's got your time, your revs, your kilometers an hour here. And basically, as soon as this starts to register that there's speed, this will start and you'll see the gauge rise. Another very handy feature of this Luffy XF Revo Re Revolution is you can actually check and clear codes. So you can set it up to do it automatically so that you don't have to keep doing it. You can read your codes. Nothing's coming up, so that's good. And then you can clear them as well. Sure, clearing, done. Nice and easy. ECU data. So, when there are multiple ECUs, the source of ECU data can be selected. So, in the back of this, there are a couple of little inputs for extra accessories. We've got other setup. So, power off mode. So, I've got this set up to auto. You can set it up as manual power off or auto power off. I've got it set to auto, so within 10 seconds of me turning the car off, this gauge will actually turn itself off, and then you're obviously not gonna wake up in the morning to a flat battery. Power on voltage, power off voltage, sleep when auto off, sleep. If, if enabled, the system will power off when the RPM value does not change in for six seconds, basically. Power on delay, so I've got that off. When starting the car, if this isn't working properly, it'll increase the time. 
Thank you for watching guys and girls. Hopefully that gives you an idea of what you can do with the Luffy gauge. Reading, clearing codes, all the gauges that you can see on there. Um, depending on what car you have and what sensors it has, depends on what the Luffy gauge will be able to show you. But I mean, it's fantastic for coolant temperatures, exhaust gas temperatures, air fuel ratios, you know, anything like that that you just want to keep an eye on and have it all there in one little gauge, it's there. So that's fantastic. Um, I'll put links in the descriptions to where you can buy some of these through Australia. It's Luffy AU. They've got an eBay site and Instagram. Um, in the UK, I know Sparkplug Steve has been selling them and he's been selling quite a lot of them. He has both kinds in stock. I think it's the XF1 and now this XF Revolution. Um, so hit up his Instagram if you want to buy one as well. Um, but check out your local supplier. Just Google it. And yeah, for the money, I think that this has got quite a lot of features for the money. And it's quite nicely presented as well, so bonus. Cheers guys, don't forget to subscribe and like and have a chat in the comments.